秉持友好初心，中金构建五星铁杆合作架构。China helped in the liberation of Zimbabwe. The relationship between the People's Republic of China and Zimbabwe is based on deep roots of mutual trust and support, and with the idea of mapping a common future. 青巴布韦掀起中文热。When ordinary people interact. Of the People's Republic of China and Zimbabwe, that's when we can say the relations are deep. 风云对话专访津巴布韦高等教育、创新和科技发展部部长阿蒙·穆尔维拉。二零二四年中非合作论坛北京峰会召开之际，津巴布韦共和国总统艾默森·姆南加古瓦对中国进行国事访问。两国发表关于深化和提升全面战略合作伙伴关系、构建高水平中金命运共同体的联合声明。姆南加古瓦一行先后访问了深圳、长沙、南京等地，最后一站是北京。抵京后，津巴布韦高等教育、创新和科技发展部部长阿蒙·穆尔维拉接受了风云对话的专访。他表示，通过教育。科技和创新领域交流互鉴，是构建中金命运共同体的有效途径。Thank you, Mr. Mudwila, for doing this interview with us. And this is the first time you've been China. So,、um, what is your impression of China so far? And if you have time, what other places, what other areas would you like to see? I would like to visit the Great Wall. <laughs> I would like to visit other provinces of China,、mm -hmm. both areas that are natural. And both areas that are basically high technology areas, but my impression of China is extremely positive,、mm. very friendly people, as we know, as expected, and we are very happy to be here. We enjoyed ourselves while we were working, so I really am very positive about China, and I am also very positive about the relations between. Zimbabwe and the People's Republic of China. And in the past few days, you have visited、um, several departments and meeting with Chinese officials. Tell us more about your meetings with those officials and what kind of agreements did you reach? All right.、Um, and we started meetings with the、uh, language center,、mm -hmm. the language learning center in Beijing, where we agreed to expand our cooperation in the learning of Chinese language in Zimbabwe, in the institutions of higher learning. As well as in vocational training,、mm -hmm. education centers, Zimbabwe is、uh, a Confucius Institute、mm -hmm. at the University of Zimbabwe for Chinese language learning that we started in 2006. But we believe that we have to expand this cooperation in different areas,、uh, in different institutions, at much lower level as well. We、uh, had a meeting with the China University of Geosciences、uh, because Zimbabwe. Is a mineral-rich country,、mm -hmm. and geosciences are very important in terms of trying to explore minerals、mm -hmm. as well as manufacture、mm -hmm. uh, value out of these minerals.、Mm -hmm. uh, we also had a visit at、uh, a University of Communications, where we were looking at artificial intelligence and the arts, and basically the meeting between engineering、mm -hmm. and the humanities. Mm -hmm. uh, radio, television,、uh, as well as telecommunications.、Mm -hmm. It was very important. It was an important visit there.、Mm -hmm. We signed a landmark、uh, cooperation agreement between、uh, the Ministry of Education, Higher Education in Zimbabwe,、mm -hmm. and the Minister of Education in、mm -hmm. the People's Republic of China.、Mm -hmm. This is basically to twin our universities. And twin our polytechnics in, in a technical and vocational education, so that、uh, we deepen the relations as envisaged by、uh, President Mnangagwa of Zimbabwe, and as envisaged by President Xi of People's Republic of China. So we believe that through education, through science, technology, and innovation, we are able to actualize、mm. the the actual relations and deepen them. Between Zimbabwe and the People's Republic of China. Is there going to be more institutes setting in Zimbabwe to teach people Chinese, and are there more people interested in learning Chinese? Chinese is a very important language. It's also in the language of the United Nations. So we believe that、uh, 
if we have to deepen our interaction with the People's Republic of China and interact with ordinary people, mm. where, when ordinary people interact of the People's Republic of China and Zimbabwe, that's when we can say the relations are deep. Mm -hmm. And in order for this to happen, we need to make sure that the language highway has been opened. Mm -hmm. So we are working on this issue where we want our institutions of higher learning, both the TVET and the universities, mm -hmm. to have the capability to teach Chinese, understand Chinese, spread the understanding of Chinese, mm -hmm. so that we are able to make our people interact. And we are having structured relations now in education, which is a very important area, mm -hmm. and structured relations that we are, are putting forward in, uh, in, in science and technology development, including innovation. Are there specific plans to include Chinese into national curriculums, maybe in primary schools, middle schools in Zimbabwe? It is correct because it's already in the universities. Mm -hmm. In the universities, uh, Chinese curricula is there. Mm -hmm. So we think that as we uh, teach more people and teach teachers, basically training the trainers, we will be able to spread the knowledge of the language mm -hmm. uh, to the general population in influencing it in the TVET institutions mm -hmm. in addition to the universities where it is being taught right now. Ming年是中金建交四十五周年，习近平主席同津巴布韦总统、穆南加古瓦会谈时指出，双方要秉持友好初心，构建以政治、经贸。安全、人文、国际协作为支柱的五星铁杆合作架构，携手构建高水平中金命运共同体。And next year will mark the 45th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic ties. So looking into the future, how do you see the strategic importance of China for Zimbabwe, especially considering the change of geopolitics in the world? The relationship between China and Zimbabwe has not been shaken by time, has been not been shaken by circumstances. It has endured all sorts of weather. So what we can only talk about is the advancement of our peoples through knowledge, mm -hmm. through innovation, through science, through technology, and making sure that our people interact through exchange of experiences, through making sure that we learn each other's languages so that we are able to move forward and get to the Africa that we want, get to the China that we want, mm -hmm. get to the relationship that we want, as I said, which is driven by mutual interest, mutual respect mm -hmm. and trust. Before the summit, your president also held talks with um, President Xi and you were there um, during the meeting. Could you tell us the highlights of the meeting and what consensus did the two sides reach during the meeting? We just uh, signed the cooperation in education, which is a landmark because we were not having structured relationships in education mm -hmm. since we started diplomatic relations 44 years ago. Mm -hmm. So for us, this is landmark. For us, this is how we map the future. We map the future with what we know and what we can do. And what we know and what we can do, the skills, the attitudes, and the values, they come from education. Mm -hmm. right. So we believe that this is very important. And during the meeting, I noticed China said it will provide more scholarship to students in Zimbabwe Correct. to attract more students. Could you tell us more uh, details about that? Yes. We actually, like with the signatures that we have done, especially also in TVET, technical and vocational education mm -hmm. and training, we are going to, we are encouraging a lot of interaction between Zimbabwe and China. And this includes our students coming uh, to, to the People's Republic uh -huh. of China to undertake so several uh, various trainings, uh, both at higher education as well as at TVET. So we are having a lot of students here, but we are also having Chinese uh, researchers and professors in health, in technology coming to Zimbabwe. And as I said, we have cooperation in high performance computing, and Zimbabwe Center for High Performance Computing is basically a cooperation program between Zimbabwe and the People's Republic of China. So we are looking forward to a much brighter future, mm -hmm. more vibrant, and more understanding, and more progress. 
And in terms of uh, innovation and technology, what kind of role do you think China could play, especially in investment, could help in Zimbabwe? China is an innovation-driven economy. And China has shown the world that you can develop based on innovation that is based on Chinese characteristics, mm -hmm. that is based on what China wants and on China's heritage. This philosophy, as it is transported to Zimbabwe, because we also believe in what we call heritage-based education, education with the characteristics of Zimbabwe's heritage, mm -hmm. we have an education system that we developed, which is called Education 5.0, which involves teaching, number one, research, number two, community service, number three, innovation, number four, and industrialization, number five. And which all of these, which are based on our heritage, our minerals, our water, our forests, our people, our culture. And this is exactly the characteristic and dimension that the People's Republic of China is following. And this is what we are following, and we believe that with this common understanding of what education should be, there can only be progress. And China is going to contribute a lot to the development of Zimbabwe in this area of science, technology, and innovation through education.近年来津巴布韦积极响应共建一带一路倡议都是中金两国友好合作的见证We know under the framework of FOCAC, there has been a lot of cooperation between China and Zimbabwe and also a lot of Chinese aid going to Zimbabwe. Over the years, how has those um, cooperation and aid helped Zimbabwe's development? Uh, Zimbabwe is an all-weather friend of China. We, we have worked, we have cooperated in all sorts of areas. But I will uh, try to emphasize the area of uh, human capital development, mm -hmm. where we have a lot of students, more than a thousand, I think, who are presently studying mm -hmm. in the People's Republic of China. We, in terms of science and technology, we are cooperating with the People's Republic of China in high performance computing, basically parallel computing, and our Zimbabwe Center for High Performance Computing was basically funded uh, by the People's Republic of mm -hmm. China. And that's what we are working on. And we believe that with this cooperation in the areas of human capital development, it becomes very important. But I also want to say mm -hmm. that uh, through this uh, relationship in the framework of, of, framework of FOCAC, there are certain areas, for example, in energy generation mm -hmm. that Zimbabwe has benefited from. But also in the area of transportation, we have had uh, the building of the new airport terminals in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. it, at the Robert Gabriel Mugabe International Airport. These are part of the cooperation areas where we are working with the uh, People's Republic of China. But we also know that our new parliament building, which is a magnificent parliament building, was built with the help of the People's Republic of China. So there are so many things in Zimbabwe that we can talk about. We have private companies from the People's Republic of China investing in Zimbabwe. Mm. For example, one of our, the biggest steel companies, steel plants, have just been um, constructed in Zimbabwe. It is arguably, I think, the biggest in Africa. Mm -hmm. it's, it's built in Zimbabwe as part of cementing these relations between Zimbabwe and the People's Republic of China. There's so much investment in the mining area. 
There's so much investment in the agricultural area, for example. Uh, Zimbabwe is uh, a premier producer of uh, high quality tobacco, and most of it finds its market in the People's Republic of China with the help of uh, the Chinese companies in making sure that production takes place. Uh, we have agreements in citrus, uh, in fruits, avocados, and so forth and so on. You see that uh, these agreements are being effected. Um, and so there's so much cooperation between Zimbabwe and the People's Republic, Republic of China. And through the FOCAC framework, more is going to come and more is happening, more structuring is happening, and basically there is vibrancy in the active relations through economics, through technology, through science, through education, and through practical uh, issues that include mining, that include agriculture, and many other areas of human endeavor. But how do you see the difference between China's cooperation and aid and those of the Western countries? China's relations in Zimbabwe are based on trust, mutual respect and mutual trust. You would know, you might not know, but you would know that um, China helped in the liberation of Zimbabwe mm. from Western domination. Zimbabwe was a colony of Great Britain and we were able to work and to, and to fight for our independence with the help of China. So you can see where we are coming from. And you can deduce yourself the kind of relation that we have with the People's Republic of China that is based on common interest, mutual respect, and non-interference mm -hmm. in each other's affairs. So domestic affairs. Mm -hmm and supporting each other at international forum. So the relationship between the People's Republic of China and Zimbabwe, the Republic of Zimbabwe, is based on deep roots of mutual trust and support mm -hmm. and with the idea of mapping a common future that is based on the same principles mm -hmm. of mutual trust and respect. That is a very um, important shared history. And nowadays, China is one of the um, biggest uh, source of FDI and then a major trading partner with Zimbabwe. But some Western media has created this narrative of a debt trap. So how do you respond to this? Narratives can always be created. It's allowed in the democratic world. But it doesn't uh, translate to the reality of the relationships between Zimbabwe and the People's Republic of China. Uh, people advance, the, uh, advance a lot of narratives, but the reality is otherwise. Mm -hmm. But we can't prevent people from thinking and talking, mm -hmm. but what we can only change is our realities on the ground. And what can, we can only describe is our realities on the ground. Our realities on the, on the ground shows that we have FDI uh, coming from the People's Republic of China. We have got capacity building coming from the People's Republic of China. Mm -hmm. We have trust coming from the People's Republic of China. We enjoy the friendship between ourselves, which is based on trust and mutual respect. That's what I can say. The rest is what people say. It's not what we are saying. But still, debt sustainability is a key issue going forward. So is there any suggestion, advice you have um, in terms of debt sustainability? The whole thing about economics is about productivity. Mm -hmm. And as we are talking about science, technology, and innovation in the education, we are talking about making economies more productive rather than dependent. Right. The more productive we are, the more we are likely to be growing our economies, the more we are likely to be able to service our loans, if we have any, the more likely we are going to have a lot of vibrancy. So FDI and investments are about stimulating productivity within an economy. Mm -hmm. It's not consumptive. It is based on trying to bring capacity to produce. Mm -hmm. And capacity to produce is, in essence, able to service any loan mm -hmm. which might have been advanced of sustainability basically is being addressed by what I'm saying, by productivity.
the issue of the narrative of trap. I mean, trap is a negative word. Of course. Who says we are being trapped? We are not mice. Mm -hmm. We are people. We know what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. So the days when the people think about Africa as dependent should basically be put at the back of our our line because that's not the narrative that we are trying to advance and that's not the narrative because cooperation means cooperation so people who talk about traps maybe they are the ones who set traps and on the country we notice over the years there has been some countries including us and some western countries have imposed severe sanctions on zimbabwe so over the years how has this impacted affected people's lives and the development of the country and as i said sanctions are made to punish people but you can't sanction the brain mm -hmm. so once we use the brain once we use our education and once we use our enduring and trusting relations we are able to ride the web and this is what we have done yes it has done a lot of damage because we were under sanctions because we reclaimed our land our rightful right to our land was reclaimed and it was taken from those who had colonized us so that has been what they call our problem but we don't believe it was our problem it is was actually what we were supposed to do and we did what we were supposed to do the rest is history we are moving ahead 一段時間以來,受二年諾現象影響,津巴布韋全國大部分地區降雨量低於正常水平,農業生產受到嚴重影響。到2025年3月前,該國約有900萬民眾需要糧食援助,約佔總人口數的60%。在经遭受严重旱灾的情况下，中方迅速提供紧急粮食援助，并加快启动援津三百口井项目，驻京应对严重干旱和粮食危机。We know that uh, Zimbabwe has suffered a lot from climate change. Just recently, Zimbabwe and other few states has declared a state of uh, disaster. Yes. So, oh, what is the latest status on the ground now? Uh, we basically uh, have suffered uh, a drought, because a severe drought because of the El Nino, uh, El Nino effect, which is basically a, a drought that is caused by some atmospheric mm. phenomena uh, that is known as El Nino. So uh, we have had, also, besides our domestic resources that we have been working on, the People's Republic of China has also helped us with aid mm. to make sure that we ride this wave and we go into a better season next year. Mm. And as we develop agricultural technologies, and you know, one of the agreements that was on making sure that we mechanize our agriculture, we also make sure that we make it possible for people to access solar energy. Right. And through this, uh, pro these programs, we expect that the effects of drought in the future mm. will be dampened, would much be less, because we would have overcome it mm. through education, through science, through technology, and through innovation, and through uh, the help and cooperation of our friends, particularly the People's Republic of China. And we know energy transition is also one of the key areas that China and Africa has been working on and is actually one of the topics the summit is going to talk about. Mm. So what is your expectation for green and cooperation on both in the framework of FOCAC and also from the international community? We expect that uh, as we transition into new energy, sustainable mm -hmm. energy, we want what we call the just transition. Mm -hmm. And when we say just transition, it is to allow for different capabilities to move. And it also must allow for help where it is necessary so that we can transition faster. And I know through our relationship with the People's Republic of China, we are likely to transition in a more just way and in a faster way and in a more sustainable way.